you are correct that with regard to children's specialists, um, what we have is a, a number of trained professional librarians. There are 10 in service at the moment. We have had to look again with regards to things like the, the specialist areas that we deal with for reference uh, and children's or young persons. Um, we do actually have those areas when we can, staff and our staff uh, for librarians should be able to deal with um, children's aspects. Uh, we did used to have a, a more people, some of them were um, YP specialists, that isn't the case anymore. We, we've obviously got to try and broaden the range of what people now deal with, uh, so people will be expected to be able mainly to do YP and adults. Uh, we do still have a reference specialist in, in the service. Um, the, the number of story times will have been reduced, again, because of the range of hours that we've got. Part of our thing uh, is trying to maximise what we do for children, because I think, as it was mentioned previously, we probably do deal with, as libraries, the two ends, which is the young and the more elderly are our two major uh, areas of people trying to use them. We do try and maximise story times. Uh, certainly, they have been reduced because of the number of areas that we um, no longer got open. We only have a limited time if we're open to community library two days a week. What we are trying to do is move people if we can do. Where the central is obviously there, we have actually wakey areas uh, within each of these sites. They are much more um, able to deal with children's areas. And the selection of what we put on the site is much better. Um, all the um, libraries do not have friends groups. Certainly when this was going through, uh, what we're trying to do is encourage friends of each library to try and form it into a friends group. We obviously have been supported in that by the established friends groups to try and put people in contact uh, with the established friends groups, some of which are, are very, very active, others not so much, but it was trying to get people interested because again, that is in part the way of getting people to come in and help within these libraries. Uh, yes, the time's on the notice board, um, certainly they were longer than I would have liked before they were all up. Um, but they are all up and they are all advertised as to what the new ones, uh, the new ones are. Uh, with regards to DBS checking, um, there is actually basically two answers. Depending on what you're dealing with as a volunteer, we will need you to be DBS checked. But there are some areas where we do not need you to be DBS checked because you will have a member of staff who has been DBS checked and will be taking your will be taking responsibility for you when you're on site. But there are other times, and again, it is exactly what you actually were going to point out with regards to when they're dealing with children. That is the one that we would basically ensure that they do. Where people, and again, uh, mentioned the volunteer on the IT side, uh, the IT volunteers, uh, when we when we looked into this, we were advised they did not need to be because they were just using IT uh, and would not be dealing with people alone. Some people would be in situ on site with them at all times. They are not there by themselves. So there was a range of either some did, some didn't, uh, but clearly we brought more to children. Yeah. So if I could come back. First of all, I asked about the opening time. Yeah. Uh, And the thing on the DBS, I think those of us who went to the safeguarding training recently, um, it's left a deep impression on us as to how easy it is. And whether you've got somebody with you or not makes absolutely no difference because you have made contact with somebody and it doesn't need to be the child, it can be a vulnerable adult and, or a vulnerable old person and those are more likely to be the people who are going to be asking for help um, with things like computers and I think that we have to tie in all our volunteers across the authority with our own safeguarding procedures. Um, so as, I think all of us, I think everybody who went to that train will agree with me that when we saw how easy it is to infiltrate people and to influence people without you actually knowing, we really have got to be a little bit more careful. Uh, through the uh, DPS, and um, clearly that wasn't a decision that we made by ourselves for my service. I'm quite happy to take that back because we discussed the issue uh, with our human resource colleagues to find out where where we do and where we don't. I'm 
but I have said that back in the context of the trade to say whether or not uh, we should extend that to all. I'm sorry, I didn't answer the first question. Uh, you did ask, yes, with regards to times, we are looking at the reviews of those 15 sites, particularly, again, taking back the issue about the lunch times, uh, because uh, that, I would accept, does, ex does impact on the usage, because it is a time when people are about. Um, I would be clear and say we're not looking at whether or not our community libraries under our, um, if you like, paid staff will extend their hours. We are clearly looking at each of them to find out whether they are open the best hours we should have people there. And whether or not if we're open on a Monday, it shouldn't be a Monday, it should be another day. Uh, our Saturdays working is another one uh, whereby we're open at our sites 9 until 1. Uh, which in part was to answer the problem that we're not open at those sites in an evening by offering Saturdays. We are looking with more further details than were in this report as to what is the kind of usage on a Saturday. Is that justifying? Would it be better at another time? Should we be open longer on a Saturday? But that would, I would make clear, be in the context of that we are looking at working with 18 hours as our libraries. Thank you very much. Chair, sure. sure. I can just add on to what Mark has said. With regards to the DBS, the, the guidance does talk about regular contact and defining regularity being a criteria to determine whether or not checks require. So we do need to balance a number of competing issues. Um, and then we'll also take a matter of review to ensure that the safe guidance concerns issues are completed. Thank you. Thanks, Sergeant. I'm going to take two more contributions. I think uh, we can wrap this up. Uh, I might make a suggestion that Evan may close on, on, on you know, delivery of operation. Could you put it right into Mark? Yeah, fine. That'd be okay. So, as I'm sorry, Bob, you first. Um, very, very quick question to be honest. The DBS is for volunteers, friends, groups, for other individuals that needs them. Do we meet the cost of that? Yes. Yeah. How, how much is it now? And then that was about £85 was last year. No, no, it's £5 pounds. No, this is from down to the display I'm sure you can get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I said, it's going to be very quick. I'm very, very quick. Just a very quick suggestion. Obviously, there's a lot of people are crashing with cash about having a library service that's Investors, Steve, or are we, are we making best use of it? So, is the transfer of the task to finish? Mm -hmm. and are we making best use of our libraries and feeding into a, a proper library strategy? Yes. Well, um, when we have all that chomp, that's precisely the time when we discuss issues that we're concerned about and put them on the agenda. First, the last words. I think I'm making sure on this DBS thing, uh, the two levels of DBS. Right, one's 35 quid, one's 85 quid. Yeah. Government of the school, yeah. you don't need to have one to be a government of the school, you know. Yeah. It's voluntary. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you need to move on to reason for your. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, all of you are happy to agree the recommendation that we've caused in places. Can you fully view the impact of the revised community library office? Really? Thank you very much. Uh, agenda item number five is the announcement of the financial state from David Armstrong into that royal office, which is requested by Bill Gilchrist, who's not here anymore. I mean, he's still here. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
taking account of the fact that the council over the last five years has reduced its staff by over 2,000, and many of those people were off the space. So we are trying to consolidate into, into fewer buildings and dispose of assets that we no longer need. We, we do receive a regular um, trickle of requests on a weekly basis of people wanting to buy pieces of land, ranging from little pieces of land next to their house or next to their, next to their, their business or whatever, through to large companies wanting to express interest in council sites. Um, the other thing we've done more recently is that, that, that between us we are covering a new group that's been set up with other public bodies in the world, particularly the health bodies, to see where the synergies are in terms of disposals, to see where we might have a site next to theirs. The three, the three biggest disposals that we have currently one is the former Eagle Lane Professional Development Centre. Their um, reduction in staff and a slightly changed relationship with schools because of the secondary, secondary schools, the academies, etc. And the general condition of the building uh, led us to, to transfer the services from there to a number of locations, mainly to Birmingham and Town Hall, which brought an empty building back into use, which is what we regard as a building that we are. Because it was put on the market some years ago for the length of period, and that was going to test it. And we also moved uh, other services elsewhere, so for example, the school library service, um, which I meant to move to an industry within the council homes on the UK panel there, so a good union actually, with the university out there that, that simulated their court simulator. Um, we're going through a disposal process. We have, we're using a consultant's language with Hampton. Uh, we're not directly engaged with potential purchases, everything is being done through Lancaster with Hampton. Uh, we're in a period now where it's down to one bidder, the highest bidder, has a period of exclusivity so that they can carry out more detailed surveys and, and actually come to a final and best offer. So we would prefer not to discuss um, financial amounts against everybody. We're not sitting here with the answer and I'm not telling you it's in the that process here. And obviously that will go on for probably two months. And we will bring a report because it's a big candidacy. We will bring a report back to cabinet in September, October. We have engaged in a big um, asbestos removal program that is running ahead of demolition. And obviously, we would want to have permission to demolish it. In terms of the, the Pony Club, um, we have now brought that matter to a conclusion. That's landed, that's landed in Morton. We have successfully, I say we, Jeanette has successfully relocated the Pony Club. And we have honoured the commitment that the council expressed at all levels, members and the leader, that we will do our best to provide the home to the alternative accommodation and decent quality. And I think, I think we've done that. We've got detailed questions on that. Jeanette has built up a relationship with her. In terms of the Bevington complex, um, it, we, it isn't in use currently. We keep it safe and secure, and um, we need to take some decisions about that in the future. Um, in the near future, and that's a slightly different proposal because Kevin and I would like to see that uh, put into a development portfolio rather than just a straightforward disposal. So that's where we have the, the seats. The, 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 the amounts coming in 
uh, from 1516 to 1890, they reflect that on the two bit sites, the developer pays the portion at certain stages. So they, they don't pay it all up front because they have to build some of the houses first and generate some of the in terms of the office accommodation, uh, what we're trying to do there is take into account of the reduce the reductions in staff um, and try and make sure that we make the best use of the buildings that we remain in. Um, starting with this one, um, when we were asked to take on the wider asset role, uh, when we were shaken out of our life just did in schools, um, the one thing that we found in this building was that it was largely occupied by staff. Uh, for example, there was one person I think on the top floor where we were created. What we're doing is that the wing above here and the wing on the other side, we actually open the building and then give all the class spaces to have the last and the other staff in here. That ticks the box in terms of trying to make the best use of the, of the building, which is the city part of the council. Uh, it also hopefully facilitates some job of working and it's bringing staff, bringing more staff closer to the place that members come to the most. We have to make a decision then, as I said earlier, we've also brought working at town hall back into use. There's about 100 plus staff in there as well. And again, part of doing that was also to bring to, to, to make a contribution to bring some people back to the square as well. In terms of the annexes here, we have to make a decision on the annexes. Um, we, we, we have a plan that we could refurbish one or both of them and make them open plan floors. Um, we went to see a building in Blackburn, which is where that would be. Similar building, we could do that. Or we could um, demolish one or demolish both of them. And, and the decision on that is going to depend on something new that's coming quite recently, which is we have staff based at Old Market House and working there, which is a former land registry building, six, seven story building. Um, and we have adult staff in there with health staff and the CCG staff, which is clearly beneficial in terms of the agenda going forward. And the opportunity, the opportunity to come up to see whether we would want to take any, any further hold on that building. And there's clearly an idea that needs to be explored, which is could we fill that building and have, have all our children and adults and health staff together in one building. So it's an idea that, that really needs some serious looking at, and again, we're halfway through that process. It may or may not come out as the best option, but in terms of a building, it would hold six, 600 plus, um, that you could do that that seen as a sensible way forward. What we haven't done at the moment is we have an option of appraisal done to see whether that makes sense for the council going forward. Clearly, if we did that, we'd have to think again about the two annexes here. That, that's, that's why that's still an open question for the time being. We have arranged other buildings that we are increasingly uh, trying to consolidate. We've just almost emptied out the finance municipal building and the upper floors of Conway building are now empty based on their condition. With those two buildings, where it, where it says in the report, it says awaiting IOM decision. We've got some interest from from a um, consortium based in the Isle of Man, who are looking to sell. Yes. Yes. Ah, but, uh, sorry. sorry about that, David. Sorry, I'll come to that later. Um, we've, we've had uh, some interest. It's only initial interest where they're looking to develop an ICT uh, university, and they discovered that their students would like to be near to the nursery school. Life that they have there and spend four years in a quieter place. And so they're looking for some, some mainland facilities. And we, have, we are currently in early discussions with them about the Treasury Building and the Conway Building and the Park Presence in Virginia Town Hall. Whether it's come to fruition or not, I don't know. But if it did, it would be a really valuable scheme. They've talked to Will and Hall, so it wouldn't clash with that if we actually complement it. But again, it could come to fruition if it did, it would be very helpful to us. Conway building has a negative value because of its, it's a listed building. Um, it's the last school that was ever built by the Birmingham School Board. And it's fair to say they spent all the money on that beautiful facade and didn't put much behind it. Finance and the Municipal Building does have a value, and obviously we have to discuss in terms of that in the consulting. So you can see that over time we're planning to have future buildings. Uh, we've just finished the transaction with Tommy Rovers, which empties our car from the solar campus into half a million pound capital received, which again hopefully gives them a utility range of units we take on the fewer space. So you can see the theme running through that is fewer staff, we need fewer buildings, we know which buildings we need to 
focus on the exception of the advocacy versus the role of market and absorption. We've got to carry on doing that. The other thing we've done is we've introduced some standard desking, uh, workstations and desking. We've got about 8 and 900 staff now. We're using those. So we've brought them into the tradition of the world where if you moved around, you took your furniture with you. You know, it was sort of bizarre experience. Um, so we are we focusing on standard workstations, standard IT equipment. Standard telephony where you can work out anywhere in the building and end up with having many people covering that. And those are the areas. The one area that we that is currently not officially paused, but we did a lot of work um, on setting up an idea that we could review assets area by area. And we used the Roman area as a pilot and we did some, some interesting work with some outside help looking at the options for the home. Um, that work is progressing slower than we like because it's simply the pressures of the first two things that I've talked about. It is something we intend to keep up on as a way of looking at all our assets in the area, looking at all our partners' assets, uh, and having some genuine uh, consultation with communities about what we can do. And I'll pass that over. Can I just take some other questions? Person, yeah, she did tell us it was the yeah. <laughs> It was one of them guesses that I'm pretty good at. And I saw so when we had the meeting the briefing before, and I was just chatting away. I said, Why have we got the Isle of Man being involved here? Uh, because there were so many acronyms that we, we seem to deal with, especially with our education department. Um, and that was one of the things that I brought up. Anyway, it was a bit of an amusing thing, this is that. Our planning department was in North Annecy originally when I've been here now for 30 years. And then we moved it to Cheshire Land and I brought it back to North Annex. And North Annex now looking at closing it down, so we're going to put planning departments. Is this a bad planning from our side that we keep moving? You can answer this just in a minute, Dave. I've got symbolic questions. The other one is with MASH. Now, to me, MASH goes back to the 70s. Mobile Army Surgical Hospitals. I didn't know we were doing that. So unless you know someone's going to stop doing these acronyms all the time, I'm actually right out what exactly what we're doing. Um, I just, I, I'm just why we keep moving people around, and, and it's the cost of doing so each time we're doing it, and you know, it's and it's the disturbance, and also um, we've got to think about our own customers who are moving around from backwards and forwards. One minute saying, oh, we're here, here back then, now we're here, back here. And what is it? Oh, we're going to move them again. It's, it, it, to me, that is not very good planning. Um, Hamilton Building, I guess I went to school there. I love the place. It's a shame we can't do anything with it, but you know, it, it has been built, it was built, I don't know, back in the 20s now, something like that. Yeah, the early part of the century, yeah. yeah. But anyway, that was it. I was quite right with the IOM. Whatever. So. There was actually yes. Why is the planning? It's bad planning. Yeah, and the mash. Back I, I just don't understand. Okay, so. Go to these. Acronyms all the whole time. Take the point. What happens? Sorry about that. Uh, the mash is the multi-agency safeguarding hub, which is important. Very um, non distinctive building at the back of the Morton complex behind the library. It's the building where we've located the children's staff, the adult staff, the health staff, and the police staff who all come together for safeguarding. Um, one, of the, one, of the, one of the things we've learned is people said there were about 40 people to go in there, and I think we're now up to at least double that and three more. I'm told that operation it works really, really well, it's had a kind of a good practice. It's, it's co location, it's given me the most difficult issues. And it's something we want to do more of. I think in, in, in space terms, I think it's going to be a bit of success, and we'll have to look at that. So that, that's what that is. And clearly, that it's tucked at the back of the north side, and that's we can see being there for, for some time yet. The moves, yet, yeah, I take your point on the moves, and sadly, we'll have to have a few more. I know it's disruptive to staff, and I know it's disruptive to the public. Some of the moves were based around the fact that we had a nine year lease remaining from Cheshire Lines, and we felt it was to maximise the use of that lease. It does offer two open, very large open 
most the largest malls we could have access to. And that's why we put things in there like the call centre and the transaction centre. And we wanted to maximise that building to get at least 600 people in there. And that has meant some moving back in two. The next big decision we'll have to take in October November is do we go with having another facility where we can get hundreds, hundreds more staff in, like all the market house or elsewhere, and then or do we repurpose these annexes and have this uh, to bring more people back to here? So I, I do take the point. And clearly the idea in trying to invest in the standard desk things was that moves would then be a lot of other people should literally be able to pick up their personal belongings if they have to be Building. In terms of Hamilton building, I've been there for 25 years. I love the building, but um, I would be very sad to see it demolished. I think it makes a real contribution to the street sitting there. It's a fine example of this town as a board school. I think it is a building that if we were going to find we have no use for it. I think we want to work with the planners to see if other organisations could make use of it. It does actually make a good contribution. Um, clearly, if we do, if we do bring it, What I would say is, I think they would have liked all of this, and what we're trying to do is reach a 
in terms of the wider issue, you, know, you do want the community to take them more. I think mean, some of these some of these are their resounding success. I think, I think it wasn't our work, it was before us, but I think the council played fair with the community hall transfers. You invested in them before you transferred them. And I think some of them are really, really successful. What we'd like to see is that extended to other buildings and other and other facilities as well. I think we should think beyond buildings, it should be, you know, other assets as well, where the community the community room can take it over and take a sense of ownership. We can also have access to grants and funds that we don't have access to. So I think, yeah, I, I take the point on that, and I think it was a particular set of circumstances. Um, I would hope if I'm signing the meeting with people like that, we, we have made it clear to that so they can only have the, the upper floors, the upper floor offices, that the, the rooms on the ground floor, which are the house where it's the main living areas, the best in the world. Thank you. It's not a question, I'd just like to say that the work that's been done on the building um, looks fantastic. Um, I haven't seen all of it, but what I have seen looks, looks really good and sympathetic to the building. Asim, then Chris, do you want to read the Chris here? Thank you, Chair. Um, just to pick up on uh, some of the reach of it, LGA have identified as other practice that's happening in other councils, is where an asset can't be disposed of. They're opening up some of their office spaces for the public businesses or to you know, get startups off the ground. And obviously, both that supports uh, local business and the economy, but also can obviously produce finances coming in where its businesses actually paying the council uh, for the office space. So I was just wondering whether that's actually been explored at all. And just on a separate issue, obviously, the capital receipts are a great source of funding for the council. That that's not propping up uh, savings that are made elsewhere because these are one-offs and structural reforms are taking place so that ongoing issues are um, not going to be reoccurring in future years. It's hard to go into this one. In terms of capital receipts, they can only be used to fund capital expenditure. They can't be used for very long. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think the reason we've got to the situation is to to clear the council um, with a heavy heart found that we have to declare a specific growth surplus. We can vote with now that we're in a commercial relationship with the Chamber of Commerce, and I think by September that will be converted to business standard units. I had a little look through the door, I didn't have the PPA, so I couldn't go in, but I had a look through the door, and I think it's going to be a really impressive facility. Um, I think the Chamber, once they get that one working, would all Interestingly, something that the new chief executive has also said that, that we go through the cycle of the council doesn't need the ability to move to disposal. It may be that, that there may be a commercial activity you could engage in. In terms of the capital receipts, it is an absolute split between capital and revenue. You want to talk on that. We're generating capital to invest in, in, in buildings. Um, Tom applies the rules very rigidly. We do, we do sometimes try to put the costs, for example, the cost of maintaining block ferries into buildings. We try to say that's a capital. Further rejected, so it is it is investment. Um, it, it, it is also to say we can't support it, but no, it can't be used to support it. Christina, thank you. Um, right, I'm going to ask you two questions. First of all, taking up what Councillor Francis has said, um, because whilst we are having touch wood, a good experience in trying to obtain their goal and the clock town as a community asset. Um, I have to say that we've been times when I've been to you in tears because we've been told other people are putting bids in, other people want the building. And when you're trying to go through this process, you don't know what's going on. I've had the, well, Joseph Mayor Partnership, but in the sense I think that the advantage of had a councillor may on there who can possibly ask more questions, don't they? That is true. But I think it's something we do need to look at. But when people have expressed an interest in some a piece of land or a building, or whatever, and want to put a plan together, they're, they're told that they've got a time limit where they've got exclusive right to do that. And other people coming in at that point need to be told that. Otherwise, it's, it's going to put people off and also just add 
adds to all the tension and the stresses because trying to keep a group of volunteers together and focused when things move so slowly and you've got personalities and people moving in different directions, it's very, very hard to keep that going. And the second question is, um, we knew I'd ask it, on the Bevington Complex. I don't want to know what, what the ideas are, I just want to know what does that mean? Kevin Adderley wants what, sorry, because that doesn't seem clear to me. You gave a form of words, but to some of you just stick as me, I didn't understand what you meant. Firstly, I might be right about the bit, as it is difficult to, I can see it in this frustration sometimes when people express an interest in the building and then more than somebody else expresses an interest. And we will take that point away. The only thing I would say, just to sit alongside that, that is, I think it's fair to say sometimes we feel that we're caught up in some bit of politics with a small bit, not involving you or the council, between groups where we, we can end up being laid off one against the other. But I, I do understand that. I think also, if it's a no, we sometimes need to say no sooner and just say why. I think sometimes we, 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 we try, try not too hard, but we try to explore and drive the way through, but we should actually say, well, actually, no, there are three interests in this building. This is the one that is the most favourite. So I accept that. In terms of the Bevington complex, it's, it's simply at this stage, dealing with Eddie Lane and the Burnham and the, the Farmland. The discussion was very quick about future use of their housing sites. They designated within housing areas they can be used for housing. Um, it's, the Bevington site is clearly next to the commercial part of Bevington, and therefore all chemical savings don't put it in the same system, don't just add it to Lambert's account and say we will dispose of it for housing. He, he wants to consider the options. And that, that's not been done yet, that it's simply standing there, it's an empty building, we look after it, we keep it secure. Look at it, it gets left alone. We've got the annex behind it as well. We've got a car park behind it. The police, uh, we need to await the police coming to a firm decision about whether that police station is to be used and it is to be used or it to be used for. And then that area needs to be as a whole. It's just at this stage, it may have potential other than simply what it is for as a third house inside. Can I ask a third question before it moves that bit Move staff in to the old town hall. Not that I'm aware of. No, 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 no. We, 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 it looked at one point as though we might have to, it looked at one point so we might have to move out of all market house quite quickly because it's a government building on the back, it's under the name of the, uh, the land registry, but there's a lease with the National Health Service because they occupy all of it and we're on a sort of goodwill handshake. Two reasons. First of all, it gives us one of the good options, and secondly, the health professionals said that they really didn't want to be moving in October November, which is just at the start of the big demand season through the winter. So we don't have to do that. We did, we did as we start work on an emergency plan, which we need to move those staff to better the town hall because we could bring it back into use very quickly, and we don't need to do that. Thank you. Thanks, David. We'll take one question from Chris and the Foundation. Yeah, uh, my question is a good one. Um, you mentioned before about desk where people can just pick up their personal items and um, I'm reading that in 20 pages for 2020 because that's been a real change um, it's a manner in which we deliver it I'm just wondering if there's any areas of the council that would lend itself to hot desking I went through hot desking in IBM about 15 years ago productivity went right up and the costs went right down so is that something that we, we, we're looking at as a council if it's possible I think it is something that we have yeah I think, I think Putting it simply, I think we're at stage one in that we standardise the testing, standardise the IT, standardise the technology, and we decided that we are going to make best use of certain things and consolidate it down. I think step two is we have to take a hard look at how many people actually do need their own desk and how many people are working in the ways. I think we've not been able to do that before because we didn't have the technology. And, and I think it's a step two, you know, um, and then step three will be that again that brings us benefits in terms of. Better looking and not so much within that space. So, yeah, I think, I think, I think um, and I say this as a paper dinosaur, I think it's easy to think that we've got to where we need to be in terms of we modernise the, the, the kit, we modernise the infrastructure, we occupy a few buildings, but actually that only step one, step three steps, and we need to, we need to keep catching up. So, 
sorry, the three years, yeah, yeah. it's also a mechanism that, that once you get there, that hopefully this austerity is not going to last forever, and the council may have to grow staff, which means that you haven't got to be stuck for the building by the years and desks and stuff, so you can, you can some leeway. Well, I think it's uh, all, I'm happy to agree with Just about 